What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Blue F91 5G. Now this is definitely going to be an interesting video because I've actually never seen a 5G phone from Blue before. In fact, I didn't even know this phone existed until really recently. But that being said, despite not really making the highest end devices and not really being compatible with that many carriers, Blue is still a pretty good brand that makes some pretty decent phones. So in this video, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about the Blue F91 5G to help you decide whether or not it's the right phone for you. So let's get started. Now with the Blue F91 5G, we're getting a 6.8 inch LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 396, and an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by 9. So overall, this display is pretty good. It's a really large display, which is going to be great for content consumption. So whether you're streaming videos, viewing photos, playing games, even reading, the Blue F91 5G is going to be a great phone for that because of its size. In addition to this, it does have some pretty good dimensions too. With an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by 9, we're getting a slightly taller and more narrow form factor than your average smartphone. So when you're looking at things in landscape mode, for example, you're going to get a much more immersive experience. And then if you're doing something like reading, with this kind of form factor, you can fit more content on the screen without having to scroll as much. And when it comes to size, even though this phone does have a really large display, it's also not too bulky, so it's still probably not going to be too uncomfortable to hold in your hand or carry in your pocket, whereas there are plenty of other phones out there with the same kind of display size. They end up being super bulky, but we're really not getting that kind of drawback here. Now, in addition to having a large display, we also got that 1080p resolution, which is going to give us a really sharp crisp image so again great for content consumption but that being said even though the display on this phone is really good and gives us a lot of benefits for what it is there are still some things it is missing one of those being a higher refresh rate and the reason I'm kind of looking at that as a bit of a drawback is there are plenty of phones out there that do have 90 Hertz refresh rates or higher and a higher refresh rate is gonna make the movement on the screen a little bit faster and smoother and overall just give you a better more premium feeling experience and unfortunately with this phone we only have a standard 60 Hertz display and don't get me wrong it's really not that big a deal but it's still something to think about all the same the other thing to keep in mind about this phone is it only has an LCD display and while again this really isn't that bad because for an LCD display it is really bright the colors look really good, and the viewing angles really aren't terrible either. It's still not going to be the best compared to some other phones out there that have IPS LCDs, and the Super AMOLED displays you find in higher-end Samsung Galaxy A-series phones are definitely a lot better than a normal LCD, so if you really want the best quality display out there, there are better options. One area you're probably going to notice this is if you're outside a lot especially if you wear sunglasses. This phone is really hard to see in that situation. I was outside doing test photos today and I have a pair of polarized sunglasses and I actually had to take them off in order to see this phone in the sun. Whereas of course with higher end phones, this is never gonna be a problem. But overall, while it's not the best display in the world, the Blue F91 5G for what it is does have a really good display, which is primarily gonna be great for content consumption. Now for storage, this phone is getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So that's a real good amount of storage. For the average user, it's pretty much all you're going to need. You probably won't even need to touch a micro SD card. And if you're a power user, if you have something like 50 gigabytes worth of apps, you'll be just fine too. And even if you have stuff like music, photos and videos, stuff like that, that's really taking up a lot of space on your phone, the micro SD card can always help out with that as well. Now, surprisingly, there is actually wireless charging with this phone. In fact, this phone does support 10 watt wireless charging. And while of course, wireless charging is not gonna change your life, it's definitely a cool feature to have, especially in a lower end phone like this. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that feature in a blue phone. Now, one really interesting feature this phone has that you're probably not gonna find in any other phone that's not a flagship phone is reverse charging. And basically what this does is allows this phone to wireless charge another phone that does support wireless charging. So for example, if your friend has like a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra or an iPhone or any other phone out there that supports wireless charging and they're running low on battery, you can actually use this phone to charge theirs. It's a really cool feature. I don't know really how often you're going to use it, but all the same, it's a really cool, unique feature this phone has that other phones in the same price range probably won't. Now for security features, this phone has both a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key and face unlock as well. So we're getting two options here to get into it. Power key fingerprint scanners are always good. Can't go wrong with that since you're probably going to be hitting the power key to wake up the display anyway. Might as well unlock it at the same time. So let's go ahead and give it a try. There we go. One more time. 
And there we go. Real fast and responsive, works really well, no issues at all. Now taking a look at the camera setup here, we got a hole punch for the front facing camera, looks real nice and clean, and this camera is 16 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. So feature wise, this phone has pretty much everything. So if you're taking lots of photos and you want a wider variety of features, maybe you want to get close up detailed images with a macro camera, but you also want to get really wide angles to capture scenery and stuff like that, then the blue F91 5G is going to be a great option for that. Now to give you an idea of what this camera can do, here are some photos taken with the main camera. Now they are pretty decent, I definitely don't think they're bad, but at the same time I have seen quite a bit better. The phone does get the job done, but the pictures themselves color wise and brightness wise are a little bit dull. So if you're really into taking photos, and that's one of the main things you're going to be doing with your phone, then you might want to consider a different device like for example the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G or the A53 5G. Those Samsung phones do take really good photos. Or if you don't want to go Samsung, maybe the Motorola Moto G Stylus 5G. All those phones do have significantly better quality than this, albeit they're a little bit more expensive. But if you do want to get the best camera quality, again you really can do better than this. But at the same time, the pictures aren't bad. If you're a more casual camera user and you're just taking a few nice photos for social media, something like that. Or maybe just vacation photos, something a little bit less serious, then the blue F91 5G will get the job done. Now here's a couple photos taken with the ultra wide camera, and again, same kind of thing. The distortion really isn't that bad, but in general I feel like the photos just look a little dull, and if you want a phone with a really good ultra wide camera, again you can do better. Now here's a photo taken with portrait mode on the main camera, and I gotta say I'm actually pretty impressed with this photo. I wasn't really expecting it to turn out that good, but the background is blurred really nicely and overall the picture does look pretty professional. So again, while this phone isn't the best in terms of camera quality, you can still get some good photos with it. Now for video, the blue F91 5G can shoot in up to 2K in the rear camera and 1080p in the front. Now I'm personally not a huge fan of this because I feel like 2K is such a pointless resolution. If someone wants to shoot higher than 1080p, they're probably going to want 4K. And if you don't want 4K, you're probably going to be fine with 1080p. So I really don't get the point of giving this phone a 2K camera because at that point, if you really want a higher resolution, you might as well just go 4K. But that being said, here's a 2K test video taken with the blue F91 5G. Now of course, this video you're watching is in 1080p, so you're not going to be seeing it in 2K, but you'll at least get an idea of the quality. In general, I do think the quality is pretty much just like the photo quality. Definitely not bad by any means, but if you want real nice looking professional videos with the best quality and really good colors, you can do better. But at the same time, I do think it is pretty good for what it is. Now one thing I really do like about the video on this phone is the autofocus. I do think the autofocus is really nice and it's quite a bit faster than a lot of mid-range phones out there. But in general, if you're recording videos you want to keep, maybe for social media or something like that, but you're not using your phone for something serious like vlogs or YouTube videos, something like that, then the blue F91 5G will get the job done just fine. But if you do want higher quality, more professional looking videos, then you might want to consider a device that can shoot in 4K instead. Now internally, with the blue F91 5G, we're getting 8GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 810 processor. I was kind of surprised to see this phone has 8GB of RAM, definitely pretty impressive for a blue phone, and again remember, of course, as the name suggests, this is a 5G phone, so you are getting access to your carrier's 5G network, and the latest and greatest technology, all that, and while it's not the end of the world if you still have a 4G phone, I do personally think it's a good idea to get a 5G phone in this day and age, so seeing that this is a 5G phone is a of course a good thing. Now I did run a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on this phone and it came back with a single core score of 576 and a multi-core score of 1692. Now depending on how familiar you are with this kind of test, this may or may not mean a whole lot to you. So I do recommend running this test on your current phone and comparing the scores to these to see whether or not this phone would be an upgrade because depending on what you have right now, it may or may not be. But I will say from my time using this phone, it is actually decently fast. I have been doing quite a few things with it from social media stuff, streaming videos and music, just browsing the web in general. I've even played some games on it and it does run this stuff 
pretty smoothly. Now, if you're playing Fortnite or something like that with super high graphics, like every mid-range phone in existence, it's probably not gonna run it nearly as well as a flagship phone, but it's still gonna get the job done. And I feel like for what most people do with their phones, you're probably not gonna need a whole lot more processing power than this. Now, for the battery, this phone has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery that supports 18 watt fast charging. And remember, with this phone, we also do get reverse charging and wireless charging. So when it comes to battery features, this is definitely one of the better devices for its price range. In addition to this, of course, a 5,000 milliamp hour battery is a really large battery, so you're gonna get a ton of life throughout the day, probably multiple days, depending on how you actually use your phone. So down the road, this is gonna be great as well, since you're already starting out with so much more battery life than you need just to get through the day. As the battery degrades, which all batteries do, of course, you're not gonna notice it nearly as quickly with this phone as you would with a smaller battery, like say an iPhone SE, for example. So if battery is an important factor for you, the Blue F91 5G will be a good option. Now, in addition to all this, the Blue F91 5G does have NFC as well, which honestly, judging by all the other cool features it has, isn't really that much of a surprise. Now, I'm not a huge fan of how they do the NFC. As long as the feature is on, or maybe even when it's off too, I haven't actually tried it, it's gonna show up on your notifications like this. And I think this is really annoying. I mean, it's kind of convenient if you need to change your NFC settings, but I've honestly never had to do that as long as I've been using NFC, which is honestly since it came out. So with this phone, yeah, we do get NFC, which unfortunately is not something we're seeing yet in every budget smartphone. But on the downside, we're stuck with this notification up here. Now, this probably isn't really gonna bother everyone, but for me personally, it's pretty annoying. I don't really see why we actually have to have a notification that NFC is on, especially one that we can't get rid of, so that is kind of a bummer. But I am at least glad this phone does have NFC, because again, a surprisingly large amount of phones that aren't flagship phones don't have that feature. Now, in case you don't know what it is, NFC is the technology behind contactless mobile payment services like Google Pay and Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, Amex Pay, all those tap and pay features. So of course, if you wanna use those, you have to have a phone with NFC. And for whatever reason, there are plenty of entry level and mid range phones that don't have NFC. So with this phone, you'll be happy to know that at least you can use that feature. But now that we've gone over some of this phone's specs and features, let's take a closer look at the device itself. So on the left side here, we got the slot for the SIM card and the micro SD card volume down, volume up. On the bottom, we got a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, the microphone, USB-C port, and the speaker. On the right side, we got the power key that again is the fingerprint scanner as well. On the top of the phone, we got the noise canceling microphone. And on the back, we got the camera setup and the flash. The back is made of this metallic, kind of frosted looking material. Not my favorite, but it's really not bad either. Overall, I would say the best thing about this phone's design, besides just being a larger phone and really giving us the benefits of a larger display, is that it looks really sleek and modern, and it's so thin that even though it has a 6.8 inch display, which is pretty much the biggest display you can get in a smartphone, it doesn't feel really bulky or anything, so even if you don't like larger phones, you're probably going to be at least okay with this one. But in conclusion, my final thoughts about the Blue F91 5G. In general, I do think this is a pretty good phone for what it is. It has a great display, maybe not the best display technology, and it doesn't have a super high refresh rate or anything like that, but it's really large, it has a 1080p resolution, and for just being a regular LCD, the colors don't look half bad. The phone also has a great amount of storage, a good camera setup, a fast processor with 5G connectivity, a really large battery, and some cool features like NFC, wireless charging, and even reverse wireless charging, which we don't see in every phone. Even flagship phones like the iPhone 13 don't seem to have that. Now, one potential drawback I do see with this phone for some people is that Blue just isn't compatible with a lot of carriers. So before you get this phone, definitely check with your carrier to make sure it's actually gonna work because you don't wanna get a good phone like this and then find out it's not gonna work with the carrier you have. But in general, if you're looking for a 5G phone with a bunch of nice features and a really good display, the Blue F91 5G is gonna be a pretty good option. But this concludes my review of the Blue F91 5G. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. But as always, I will see you in the next video.